It was a typical Friday evening in early spring when the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm, golden glow through the window of our cozy little home. I was in the kitchen, the aromatic scent of my dad's favorite stir-fry filling the air, when I heard the familiar rumble of the front door opening. Hey, Vic! Smells great! My dad's voice boomed, rich with warmth and a hint of fatigue. Thanks, Dad. Dinner's almost ready. I called back, stirring the contents of the pan with a wooden spoon. I could hear the clanking of metal and the sound of footsteps as my dad and his co-worker Hank entered the kitchen. Hank had been working with my dad for a few months now, helping him with his woodworking business. He was 28, tall with a sturdy build that hinted at years of physical labor, and an easy smile that somehow made the long hours at the shop seem a bit more bearable. I'd met him a few times before, but there was something different about him that night. Perhaps it was the way he looked at me, his blue eyes lingering a moment too long. Hey, Victoria, he said, his voice smooth and relaxed. What are you cooking? It smells amazing. Just some chicken stir-fry, I replied, trying to keep my tone casual even as I felt my cheeks warm under his gaze. Want some? Definitely. I'm starving, he said, a wide grin spreading across his face. I couldn't help but notice how he leaned slightly closer as he spoke, a subtle gesture that made my heart race. After a quick dinner filled with easy conversation and laughter, we moved to the living room. Dad cracked open a couple of beers, and Hank joined him, their discussion shifting to work. I perched on the edge of the couch, half listening, half watching Hank as he animatedly described the latest project at the shop. Victoria, you should come by the shop sometime. We could use an extra set of hands, Hank said, glancing over at me, his expression earnest. Yeah, I might do that, I replied, feeling a flutter in my stomach at the thought of spending more time with him. As the evening wore on, I decided to take a shower. The hot water cascaded over me, washing away the day's worries. I found myself daydreaming about Hank, his laugh, the way he looked at me, and the way my heart raced whenever he was near. What would it be like if there was something more between us? The thought sent a thrill through me, and I found myself smiling, lost in the fantasy. Once I was done, I slipped into my pajamas and crawled into bed, the events of the evening swirling in my mind. The house was quiet now. My dad and Hank had settled into the living room, the faint sounds of their conversation drifting through the walls. As the clock struck one, a soft creak interrupted my thoughts. I held my breath, the sound sending a shiver down my spine. The door to my room opened slowly, and there stood Hank, silhouetted against the dim light from the hallway. My heart raced as I sat up, unsure of what to say or do. Hank? What are you doing here? I whispered, trying to mask the excitement in my voice. I couldn't sleep, he replied, stepping closer, his eyes dark and intense. I was thinking about you. His words hung in the air between us, thick with tension. My heart raced as he moved closer, the faint light illuminating his features. I could see the mix of desire and uncertainty in his expression, and it made my breath catch in my throat. What do you mean? I asked, feigning nonchalance, even though every part of me was electrified. He hesitated, and for a moment I thought he might turn and leave. But then he took a step forward, closing the distance between us. I mean, I've been thinking about you ever since I met you. There's something about you, Victoria. His voice trailed off, and I felt my pulse quicken. Before I could process my thoughts, he leaned in closer. The heat radiating from his body drew me in, and I found myself leaning forward too, our faces inches apart. I could see the desire in his eyes, mirroring my own, and it sent a thrill through me. And then he kissed me. It was soft at first, tentative as if we were both testing the waters. But it quickly turned passionate as if a dam had burst, releasing all the pent-up emotions that had been building between us. My hands found their way to his hair, pulling him closer as the kiss deepened. 
What are we doing? I managed to gasp between kisses, my mind racing with the implications of this moment. I don't know, he breathed, his forehead resting against mine. But I can't stop thinking about you. I had to see you. I felt a rush of excitement mixed with fear. What would this mean for us? For my dad? I wanted to push the thoughts away, to let myself get lost in this moment, but reality loomed like a dark cloud in the back of my mind. Hank, I whispered, pulling back slightly to look into his eyes. We can't... Shh. He silenced me with another kiss, more insistent this time. It felt so right, so intoxicating that I couldn't resist. My body responded instinctively, and before I knew it, we were tangled in the sheets, exploring the depths of our newfound connection. When I finally drifted off to sleep, I did so with a sense of peace, my heart full of hope and excitement. But when morning light crept through the curtains, I woke to the reality of what had happened. The weight of my actions settled heavily on my chest. Hank and I had crossed a line, and I knew it. What if my dad found out? What if this was a mistake? My thoughts raced as I got ready for the day. Over the next few weeks, our secret relationship blossomed in the shadows. We would steal moments together whenever we could, sneaking kisses and whispers behind closed doors but it was exhilarating and terrifying all at once. I felt alive, but I was also constantly glancing over my shoulder, waiting for the inevitable fallout. Then one fateful day, as I was scrolling through my phone during lunch, I stumbled upon a photo in Hank's gallery. One of me, candidly taken while I was laughing at something my dad had said. I could see the love in his eyes, and for a moment I felt a rush of warmth, but then I noticed something else. In the background of that photo, there was another image, a picture of my dad, taken without his knowledge, standing by the workbench at the shop. The angle was perfect, revealing a detail I hadn't noticed before, a hidden stash of old, valuable woodworking tools my dad had kept tucked away. I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. Did Hank know about this? Had he been taking these photos for a reason? I needed answers. When I confronted Hank later that evening, he seemed taken aback. I just thought it was a nice picture, Vic. I didn't mean anything by it. But this isn't just a picture, Hank. There's something else in it, I said, my voice rising slightly. You took a picture of my dad without him knowing. Why would you do that? I didn't think it would matter, he replied, his brow furrowing. I was just trying to capture moments, to remember the good times. Good times? This isn't some art project, Hank. I snapped, frustration bubbling to the surface. What if my dad finds out? He won't, he insisted, his tone defensive. I'd never let that happen. Despite his assurances, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. It gnawed at me, a persistent reminder that our secret was built on shaky ground. That night, I decided to talk to my dad about everything. I needed him to understand, to know that I wasn't just some casual fling for Hank. This was real for me. Dad, I began, my heart racing as we sat at the kitchen table. Can we talk? Sure, sweetheart. What's on your mind? He looked up from his newspaper his expression shifting to one of concern. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves. It's about Hank. His face hardened slightly at the mention of my dad's co-worker. What about him? Dad, I think he's... I paused, trying to find the right words. I think he's really into me, and I've developed feelings for him too. My dad's expression darkened. Victoria, you need to be careful. He's not someone you want to get involved with. I know him well enough. Why? What do you mean? I asked, confused. He's ambitious, and he has his eyes set on more than just woodworking, my dad said, his voice low. I don't want you to get hurt. Dad, that's not fair. You don't know him like I do, I protested, my voice rising. He's not just some random guy. He's kind, funny, and he cares about me. Listen to me, 
my dad said, his tone firm. I just don't want you to be another notch on his belt. I felt a surge of anger. You don't know that. Just because you don't like him doesn't mean I can't make my own decisions. My dad's expression shifted from concern to frustration. You're still my daughter, and I can't just stand by while you make a mistake. I stood up abruptly, feeling the walls close in around me. You don't understand. This is my life, not yours. As I stormed out of the kitchen, I felt a mixture of anger and hurt. My dad had always been protective, but this felt different. I wanted to prove him wrong. The days that followed were a whirlwind of emotions. I felt trapped between my feelings for Hank and my dad's protective instincts. I knew I had to confront Hank about what I'd learned, about my dad's suspicions. One evening, I found him sitting on the porch, sipping a beer and staring out into the distance. He looked up as I approached, and a smile broke across his face. But I wasn't in the mood for pleasantries. Hank, we need to talk, I said, my voice steady but filled with tension. Uh-oh, that sounds serious, he replied, his brow furrowing slightly. It is serious. My dad thinks you're using me and I found those photos on your phone, I said, watching his expression change. Victoria, I swear, I didn't mean anything by it, he said, sitting up straight. I just wanted to capture moments, that's all. But there's more to it, isn't there? You've been taking pictures of my dad, too, I pressed, my frustration bubbling to the surface. Hank looked down, avoiding my gaze. I didn't think it would matter. I thought it was just harmless fun. Fun? This is not fun, Hank. You're invading our privacy, I said, my heart racing as I realized the implications of what he was saying. He ran a hand through his hair, his expression a mixture of frustration and guilt. I didn't want to hurt anyone, Victoria. I just got caught up in the moment. But this is more than just getting caught up, isn't it? You're crossing lines, Hank, I said, my voice steady but filled with emotion. I need to know if you really care about me or if this is just a game to you. Hank looked at me, his expression serious. I do care about you, Victoria. But I need to be honest, too. I've been looking out for myself in this, too. What do you mean? I asked, my heart sinking. There are opportunities at the shop. If I get close to your dad, it could help me advance my career. But that doesn't change how I feel about you, he said, his voice earnest. I felt my heart drop. You're using me to get to my dad? No, I didn't mean for it to go this way, he protested, standing up now, desperation in his eyes. I really like you, Vic. I didn't plan for any of this to happen. I shook my head, feeling the walls of my world close in around me. I can't do this anymore, Hank. I need to think. I left him standing on the porch, my heart racing with conflicting emotions. I felt betrayed, yet I still had feelings for him that I couldn't just turn off. The next few days were filled with a heavy silence in the air, a tension that hung over everything like a dark cloud. I tried to talk to my dad about it, to get his perspective, but every time I brought it up, he shut me down. I don't want to hear it, Victoria. I've seen how men like him operate, he insisted, his voice firm. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I confronted my dad again one evening. Dad, I need you to listen to me, I said my voice shaking with frustration. Hank isn't just a random guy. He cares about me. My dad's expression hardened. You think you know him, but you don't. I can't just sit back and watch you get hurt. Why don't you trust me? I'm an adult. I can make my own choices, I shouted, my heart racing. Because I've been around long enough to know how this works, Victoria. You think this is all sweet and romantic but he's probably just using you, my dad said, his voice filled with frustration. Stop it! You don't know anything about us! I yelled, tears pricking at the corners of my eyes. My dad's face softened, and he sighed. I just want to protect you. Can't you see that? But his words fell on deaf ears. 
the tension between us grew, a rift forming where once there had been understanding and trust. I felt trapped, caught between my dad's protective instincts and my own feelings for Hank. Then, one fateful evening, I made the decision to meet Hank. I needed closure, needed to understand what was really going on between us. When I arrived at his apartment, I found him sitting on the couch, a beer in hand and a look of resignation on his face. Vic, he said, standing up as I walked in. I wasn't sure if you'd come. I needed to talk, I replied, my voice steady. I've been thinking about everything you said. I didn't mean to put you in a tough spot, he said, running a hand through his hair. I just got caught up in everything. I took a deep breath, the weight of the moment settling over me. I just want to know how you really feel about me. Is this real or is it just convenient? It's real, Vic. I care about you, he replied, his voice earnest. But I also need to look out for myself. I can't ignore my career ambitions. Then maybe we should just end this, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Hank's face fell, and for a moment, I felt a pang of regret but I couldn't ignore the truth. We're both just trying to figure out what we want, and maybe we're not on the same page. I don't want to lose you, he said, desperation creeping into his voice. Can't we find a way to make this work? I shook my head. I don't think so. This isn't just about us anymore. It's about my dad, and I can't let you come between us. As I turned to leave, I felt a rush of sadness wash over me. I wanted to fight for what we had, but I knew deep down that it was the right decision. When I walked back home, the weight of my decision settled heavily on my shoulders. I felt a mix of sadness and relief, knowing I had made the right choice. I was determined to talk to my dad, to explain everything. But when I walked in, I found him sitting at the kitchen table, his face drawn and worried. Where have you been? He asked, concern etched into his features. I went to see Hank, I replied, my voice steady. Did you two have a fight? He asked, leaning forward. No, Dad. I ended things, I said, my heart racing. He sighed, a look of relief washing over his face. I'm glad. I didn't want to see you get hurt. But, Dad, it was real for me, I admitted, my voice trembling. I had feelings for him. I know you did, sweetheart but it was never going to work, he said softly. You need someone who values you for who you are, not for what you can do for them. I understand, I said, feeling the tears well up in my eyes. But it still hurts. I know, and it's okay to feel that way, he said, reaching out to squeeze my hand. You'll find someone who truly cares about you, I promise. The following week was filled with a cautious optimism. My relationship with my dad had improved and I was focusing on myself, finding new hobbies and reconnecting with friends. I even started painting again, something I hadn't done in ages. Each brush stroke on the canvas felt like a release, allowing me to express the complex emotions swirling inside me. Then, one fateful afternoon, my world turned upside down. I was sitting in my room, painting, when I heard a loud knock at the door. It startled me, pulling me out of my creative trance. I glanced at the clock. Who could it be at this hour? I opened the door, and to my shock, there stood Hank. His face was pale, eyes wide with urgency. Victoria, we need to talk. It's important, he said, stepping into my room without waiting for an invitation. What are you doing here? I asked, feeling a mix of anger and surprise. I thought we agreed to give each other space. I know, but I couldn't just stay away. You have to hear me out, he pleaded, his voice urgent. I crossed my arms, a mixture of frustration and concern gnawing at me. What's so important that you had to come here unannounced? I've been doing some thinking. I made a mistake and I need to tell you the truth about why I was taking those photos, he said, his eyes searching mine for understanding. I felt my heart race, 
but I couldn't let my guard down just yet. Go on, I said, my voice steady, though my hands trembled slightly. I didn't just take those pictures for fun. I had a reason, he admitted, his gaze dropping to the floor. I was trying to find a way to prove myself to your dad. He's got some valuable tools in that workshop, and I thought if I could show him I was trustworthy, I might get a shot at working more with him. My breath caught in my throat. So you were using me to get to him? No, it wasn't like that, he insisted, stepping closer. I really do care about you, Victoria. But I thought if I could get your dad's approval, I could secure a future for us, together. I shook my head, feeling betrayed once again. You can't just use me like a pawn in your game, Hank. I thought we had something real. We do have something real, he shouted, frustration boiling over. I've been confused, but I can't stop thinking about you. I want to be with you. Just then, the tension in the room shifted as my dad's voice called from the hallway. Victoria, is everything okay? Panic washed over me. Hank, you need to leave, I whispered urgently, my heart racing. No, please, he begged, his voice dropping to a desperate whisper. Let me talk to him. I can explain everything. Before I could respond, my dad stepped into the room, his expression shifting from curiosity to confusion as he saw Hank standing there. What's he doing here? Dad asked, his tone turning defensive. Hank just wanted to talk about work, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Work? Dad raised an eyebrow, clearly unconvinced. Hank, you shouldn't be here. You need to leave. Hank, just go, I urged, feeling the weight of the situation pressing down on me. No, I'm not leaving until I get a chance to explain. Hank shot back, his eyes blazing with determination. Mr. Thompson, I need you to understand. I care about your daughter and I want to earn your trust. Dad's expression darkened and he stepped forward, his protective instincts kicking in. You're not going to come into my house and make demands, Hank. You've crossed a line and I won't stand for it. Dad, please. I interjected, feeling torn between the two men in my life. Let him explain. But Dad's face was resolute. No, Victoria. You deserve better than someone who thinks they can manipulate us for their own gain. Hank's face fell, and for a moment, I felt a pang of sympathy for him. I didn't mean to manipulate anyone. I was trying to build a future. A future built on lies? Dad shot back, his voice rising. You think that's going to get you anywhere? I was wrong, and I admit it, Hank said, his voice steady despite the tension in the room. But I can't lose Victoria over this. I want to prove myself to both of you. The air crackled with tension as the two men faced off, and I felt like a tug-of-war rope. My heart ached for Hank, who was desperate to make things right, but I also understood my dad's protective nature— this was my life they were battling over, and I couldn't let it spiral out of control. Dad, can we just listen to him? I pleaded, my voice wavering. He's trying to be honest. Honest? Dad scoffed, running a hand through his hair. He came here under false pretenses. That's not honesty. Please, I urged, my eyes darting between them. Just give him a chance. Dad sighed heavily, his shoulders slumping. Fine, but if he tries to pull any more tricks, I'm done. Hank nodded, his expression grateful yet wary. Thank you, sir. I know I've made mistakes, but I want to show you both that I can be better. I want to work with you, not just because of the tools, but because I respect you and what you've built here. Dad crossed his arms, his expression skeptical. And how do you plan to earn that respect? I'll work harder than anyone else. I'll put in the hours. I'll prove that I'm not just in this for the connections, Hank said, his voice earnest. And I want to be honest with you, Mr. Thompson, about everything. Dad narrowed his eyes, studying Hank closely. If you're serious about this, then you need to understand the stakes. My daughter's happiness is my priority. If you hurt her again, 
I won't hesitate to cut you off. I understand, Hank replied, his tone serious. I'm not here to hurt her. I'm here to show her and you that I can be trusted. The tension in the room hung thick as my dad weighed his options. Finally, he nodded slowly. All right, but this is your last chance, Hank. Prove yourself and maybe, just maybe, you'll earn my respect. As my dad turned to leave, I felt a mixture of relief and apprehension. Dad, wait, I called out. Can you give us some space to talk? He hesitated for a moment before nodding curtly. Fine, but don't keep me waiting. As the door clicked shut behind him, I turned to Hank, feeling a wave of emotions crash over me. What just happened? I asked, half in disbelief. I don't know, he said, running a hand through his hair. But I think I might have just gotten a second chance. But you need to prove it, Hank. This isn't just about work. It's about trust, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. You need to be honest with me from now on. I will, he promised, stepping closer. I want to make this work. I want us to be something real. I looked into his eyes, searching for sincerity. Do you really mean that? I do, he said, his gaze unwavering. I want to build something with you. I know I messed up, but I'm ready to fight for us. As the weeks went by, Hank started to prove himself at the shop. He worked harder than I had ever seen him, putting in long hours and genuinely trying to earn my dad's trust. And slowly, I began to feel my feelings for him rekindle. But just when I thought we were on the right track, the universe threw another wrench into the works. One evening, I returned home after a long day of painting and found my dad sitting at the kitchen table with a grave expression. Victoria, we need to talk, he said, his tone serious. What's wrong? I asked, my stomach tightening. It's about Hank, he began, his expression darkening. I received a call today from one of his former employers. They had some serious concerns about his past. What do you mean? I asked, my heart racing. What concerns? They said he was let go because of some questionable behavior, my dad explained. It's not just about ambition. There are allegations that he didn't respect boundaries with female employees. My heart sank. Dad, that can't be true. He's changed. Victoria, I don't want to believe it, but I have to look at the evidence. He said, his voice heavy. I need you to be careful. Tears filled my eyes as I processed the news. I have to talk to him about this. Just be cautious, my dad urged, concern etched on his face. I nodded, feeling the weight of my dad's words. As soon as I had a moment, I called Hank. Can you come over? We need to talk, I said, my voice trembling. Sure, what's up? He asked, sounding casual, which only intensified my anxiety. Just come over, I insisted, cutting the call short. When Hank arrived, I was pacing the living room, my heart racing. Victoria, what's going on? he asked, concern flooding his features. Sit down. We need to talk, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. My dad got a call about you. What do you mean? he asked, confusion crossing his face. They said you were let go from your last job for inappropriate behavior with female employees, I said, watching his reaction closely. Hank's expression shifted from confusion to defensiveness. That's not true. I swear I didn't do anything wrong. Then explain it to me. Why would they say that? I pressed, feeling a mix of anger and hurt. I don't know. Maybe someone's trying to sabotage me. He shot back, frustration evident in his voice. I've been nothing but honest with you. Honest? I echoed, feeling the weight of betrayal creeping in. You've already lied to me, Hank. How can I trust you now? I didn't want to get into my past, Vic. I was trying to move forward, he said, desperation creeping into his voice. I've changed. I'm not that guy anymore. But if you didn't do anything wrong, why would someone lie about it? 
I asked, my heart racing. Maybe I did something that they interpreted wrongly, he replied, his voice earnest. I've had relationships before, but I never crossed lines. I swear I wanted to believe him, but doubt gnawed at my insides. How can I trust you now? I thought you were changing, but this makes everything seem... questionable. Please, give me a chance to explain. I'll prove to you that I'm serious about us, he begged, stepping closer. I need time to think, I said, my voice breaking slightly as I stepped back. Victoria, don't do this, he pleaded, desperation evident in his eyes. I can't lose you over this. Maybe you should have thought about that before, I shot back, anger rising within me. You put me in this position. That night, I was a whirlwind of emotions, anger, confusion, and heartache swirling within me. I felt betrayed, caught between my dad's protective instincts and my feelings for Hank. I stayed up late, pacing my room, replaying the day's events in my mind. Finally, after what felt like hours of turmoil, I made a decision. I needed to confront Hank again, face to face. If I was going to find out the truth, I had to hear it from him. The next day, I called him. Can we meet? I asked, my voice steady despite the anxiety clawing at my insides. Of course, I'll be there, he replied, and my heart raced. When he arrived, I could see the nervous energy radiating off him. You wanted to talk? He asked, his voice tense. Yes, I said, taking a deep breath. I need you to be honest with me. About everything. Hank nodded, his expression earnest. I will. I promise. Tell me about your past, I said, my voice steady. I want to know what really happened at your last job. He hesitated and I could see the internal struggle on his face. Finally, he sighed. Okay, I made some mistakes. There was a situation where I flirted with a co-worker, but I never meant to cross any lines. It was blown out of proportion, and I lost my job because of it. But I've learned from that. Flirting? That doesn't seem like a mistake to me, Hank, I said, feeling anger rising within me. It was a bad judgment call. I didn't mean to hurt anyone, he insisted, his voice rising slightly. I was young and foolish. Did you ever think about how your actions affect others? I shot back, frustration boiling over. I'm not that person anymore, he said, desperation creeping into his voice. I've changed. Changed? You think you can just erase your past? I asked, my heart racing. I need someone I can trust completely, not someone who has a questionable past. I can prove myself. I'm working hard at the shop and I want to build a future with you, he exclaimed, stepping closer. Maybe that future isn't meant to be, I said, tears pricking at my eyes. I can't ignore this, Hank. Don't say that, he pleaded, desperation seeping into his voice. I love you, Victoria. I've never felt this way about anyone before. My heart fluttered at his words, but I couldn't let myself be swayed. You're saying that now? But what if the real Hank comes back? I promise you, I won't go back to that life. I want to change. For you. For us. He said, his eyes pleading. But deep down, I felt the cracks forming in our relationship. I can't be with someone who might hurt me again. I won't take that risk. Hank stepped back his face falling. So this is it? After everything we've been through? I think it's for the best, I said, my heart breaking at the finality of my words. As I walked away, tears streamed down my face. I had made the right decision, but it felt like I was losing a part of myself in the process. The pain of letting go weighed heavily on my heart. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was losing something real, but I knew I had to prioritize my own well-being. In the following days, I focused on myself. I spent more time painting, finding solace in each stroke of the brush. I took long walks, allowing myself to process the whirlwind of emotions that had enveloped me. But just as I thought I was healing, I received another unexpected call. It was from Hank. Can we meet again? 
he asked, his voice filled with urgency. I don't know, Hank, I replied, feeling a mix of apprehension and curiosity. Please, it's important. I need to tell you something, he urged. I hesitated, but a part of me wanted closure. Fine. Just for a little while. When we met, I could see that something had changed in him. He looked more determined, more focused. Victoria, I need you to listen to me. I've been talking to someone about my past and I want to make things right, he said, his voice steady. What do you mean? I asked, my heart racing. I've contacted a therapist to help me work through my issues, he explained. I want to understand why I acted the way I did, and I want to make sure I never hurt anyone again. I felt a flicker of hope. You're serious? Yes. I want to change. For real this time, he said, his eyes earnest. I'm committed to becoming a better person. I took a deep breath, processing his words. That's a big step, Hank, but it's going to take time for me to trust you again. I understand, he said, his voice filled with determination. But I'm willing to do whatever it takes to show you that I'm serious. All right, I said, feeling a mixture of hope and caution. But this time, it's going to be different. The following weeks were filled with uncertainty and tentative hope. Hank began attending therapy sessions, and he kept me updated on his progress. I could see the change in him, the genuine desire to grow and improve. But the scars of our past still lingered, and I knew rebuilding trust would take time. One evening, as I was painting in my room, I received a text from Hank. Hank, can I come over? I want to show you something. Curiosity piqued, I replied. Me. Sure. But what is it? Hank. You'll see. I promise it's worth it. When he arrived, I could see a light in his eyes, a spark of excitement that made my heart race. I have something for you, he said, holding out a small box. What is it? I asked, feeling a mixture of excitement and apprehension. Just open it, he urged, his voice filled with anticipation. I opened the box and inside was a small delicate necklace with a charm shaped like a key. Hank, this is beautiful, I exclaimed, feeling a warmth spread through me. It represents a new beginning, he explained, stepping closer. I want you to have the key to my heart. I'm committed to proving myself to you. Tears filled my eyes as I looked up at him. Hank, this means a lot to me but it's going to take time for me to heal. I understand, and I'm willing to wait, he said, his voice sincere. I just want you to know that I'm here for you. As we stood there, the weight of our past slowly began to lift. I felt a sense of hope blossoming within me, a realization that perhaps we could find our way back to each other. In the weeks that followed, we began to rebuild our relationship. Hank continued his therapy, and I supported him every step of the way. We took things slow, focusing on trust and communication. And with each passing day, the bond between us grew stronger. One evening, as we sat together on the couch, Hank took my hand. Thank you for believing in me, he said, his voice filled with emotion. I know I have a long way to go, but I'm committed to being the man you deserve. I smiled, feeling a warmth spread through my heart. And I'm willing to take this journey with you, Hank. In that moment, I knew that while our past was complicated, our future held the promise of something beautiful. Together, we would navigate the twists and turns of life, learning and growing from our experiences. And as I looked into his eyes, I felt a renewed sense of hope. A hope that whispered of love, trust, and the possibility of a brighter tomorrow.